Hey everybody, it's Moonbow here, and welcome back to some more Endless Scrap Mechanic. It's time for Top of the Shop, the series where we take a look at the best builds from the Steam Workshop for inspiration, for creativity, or maybe just to have our minds blown. Now there's some really cool things to check out today, so well, let's just get right on to it. So, first up, we are going to be checking out what is actually a set of survival trucks. So, first up, we've got the Survival 10 Crates truck created by Lady Grilka. Now, this is a truck intended for survival mode, where you can go and get crates from the packing station. And, of course, load them up here and then go to the hideout, I suppose, for some awesome trading deals. Now, this thing looks really cool. I would imagine it is entirely um, all vanilla, probably all things you could get in survival mode as well, and it's looking really cool. Look at this, we can open up the back. Oh, whoa, okay, check this out. There seems to already be loaded up crates of hay. Okay, there's only a few of them in there, but uh, yeah, I guess we, we've we already stocked up on hay. Now, it's kind of funny though, because you can't farm hay at all, but it would be really interesting uh, to see some new types of survival crops that kind of go just beyond the same plot of farming that you can do normally. Now, what is this? Okay, this is the crate and the vacuum pump for discharging at the packing station. And there it is. Yeah, okay, that's the uh, mechanism to launch things out. Wow, that's so cool. I love the um, protective barrier here as well. We've got like a little guardrail keep things safe. So it looks like we could just get into the seat right here through that front window and let's just hop out here. Look at this. Oh, whoa, oh, we've got, uh, that was a, a bouncy seat. Ooh, nice. We've got some air ride cushioning for the drive. Now let's take this thing for a spin here. Okay, speed is reasonable. Yeah, this thing is a really smooth ride and I don't think, I don't see any suspension there. You can see back here, there's no suspension. I don't think there's any suspension. Oh, there is some suspension on the front there. This looks like a really, really interesting setup. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks really cool. The way there's like a bar that's uh, pivoting in the center there. Oh man, look going up on the side hill. And I believe on the back here, it's almost like a bogey system or something. You can see um, the front wheels, that, or the front wheels of the back wheels. Uh, they kind of go up first and then they kind of conform to the contour of the ground. This is definitely a really reliable drive. Now this is the perfect example. Okay, this is amazing. We can just kind of go in reverse to see this here, but look at the wheel system in the back there. See how they're kind of pivoting up and over those little hills? So I did mention that there were two trucks and this is the second one here. This is the 72 crate survival truck created by Lady Grilka as well. So, um, you know, if 10 wasn't enough and you wanted way more than that, then you grab yourself this truck here. Wow. Okay, so this one doesn't come with any uh, preloaded crates at all. So I think in creative mode, uh, I believe we have access to these farm crates somehow, right? Uh, maybe, maybe we'll just grab a tree crate. That should hopefully be the appropriate size here. And let's just see what it's like. Oh, okay. There's bars in the center. Look at that. That is a really nice. And that's one thing I always like to do in survival mode uh, is just kind of make it so that if you have something like this that you want to store in uh, a vehicle or anything like that, uh, to put kind of like limitations on where it can go. And then that way you don't accidentally put it in like a spot that it, you know, really shouldn't be. All right, so I'm just loading this entire thing up with these tree crates. I've already done the first trailer. So now I'm just gonna move on to the second one. And yeah, this thing can hold a lot. And I love the design. I love the parts usage. This thing looks so cool. And I'm really excited to see what this is gonna look like once it's all loaded up and we start hauling it. All right, there we go. We've got it loaded up. Now, I don't know if I have the max amount of crates or not. I feel like I could definitely, you know, you could fit way more crates, especially since they just kind of stick to each other. But we're going to go with that amount right there. So let's ooh, open up our front door. We're going to hop into the truck, shut the door. All right, here we go. We've got our load of lumber. Let's take it away. Oh man, this is really satisfying. I love having like trailers and hitches and cranes and hooks and things on vehicles. And this is just really satisfying to watch. And look at that. So we've got that wheel system as well on those back trailers there. 
Uh, you can see them leading as they go up and over hills. Oh man, this is so satisfying. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at the M3A1 Stuart Vanilla created by Zen. Now, this thing just looks like such an adorable tank. I know it's a tank, but you know, it's just so cute and compact. And wow, this thing looks really, really cool. I wasn't expecting all of these little detail parts. Uh, but you can see there are loads of things going on in here. Now the question is, how do I get inside? Uh, it seems like uh, there's no switches on the exterior anywhere. Oh, there is a hole right here. So I spent the last couple minutes trying to figure out how to get into this tank. And I think I realized that the way you get in is there's just like a bit of the seat exposed right here. So I'm, I'm just going to assume this is what I do. So we're just gonna hop into the seat wherever it is. It's in there somewhere. Um, and yeah, so now we are a tank and oh man. Wow, this thing turns so fast. Oh, now this is funny. So this is like a miniature version of what we just saw on those uh, truck trailers. You can see the wheels are capable of pivoting on their own there like that. That is so cool and this is really a super smooth driving experience. Wow. And you can even see the turrets like self-stabilizing capabilities. Like this thing is pointing in a straight line. Now I should be able to control it though, of course. So we're gonna press one and two here. Okay, there we go. Interesting. And then I guess maybe three and four. Yeah, three and four is up and down. Oh wow, that's cool. And then five. Oh, I think I launched a spud. I believe there was a spud in there. Let's spawn this in again just to check. Oh, uh oh, I am. I'm now in the tank. This is my home now. So I see an explosive inside that little hole there. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a wall here and I guess I'm just going to pay attention and I'm going to see if this thing launches it. Now, I guess uh, I guess this is close enough here. Let's see what happens. Oh, yeah, it worked. OK, so it went through. Uh, that is an issue I find with these uh, explosive launching mechanisms is they tend to go so fast through space um, that they tend to kind of just glitch through things. But eventually they do detonate. Uh, and so this thing does, in fact, have an explosive capability. And now just like the truck, I want to take this on these bumps right here really fast just to see those wheels in action. Oh, yeah, look at that. You can really see them compensating right now. That is so cool. And next up, we've got the MH6M Little Bird with no mods and it is destructible. I'm not sure if that means it's made out of cardboard or what. Uh, now, this was created by He Is Watching You. Uh, who? Who's watching me? Now, as a helicopter, I should probably check out the controls on this thing. So we've got some buttons here. It's to turn on the engine is one. Two is the minigun. Three and four is rotate. What? Whatever that might mean. And then WASD is the flight controls. All right, so let's spawn this bad boy in. Oh, look at that. Nice cushioned suspension landing pieces right there. Uh, we've got the twin cannon spud guns on either side. And look at this. We've got thrusters on the blades pointing down, which means there might be some lift coming from those. So let's see here. We're going to hop into the seat here. Uh, I read the controls already, don't really remember them, but I believe one was just to get the blade spinning. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we've got like a natural floating forward kind of feeling. Uh, and I guess the uh, the rest of it is suspension glitch, maybe? Uh, all right, so let's just, let's try this out here. Let's just tilt the tail back. Oh, yeah. Wow, this thing is nice and smooth. Whoa, okay, so that's roll. Oh, I understand. So this is yaw control. Uh, so that's what they mean by rotate. Because if I use A and D, it actually rolls the helicopter from side to side. Okay, very interesting. So it might be a little easier if we use like follow camera at the back here like this. Uh, and maybe we can just kind of pretend like this is GTA or something. You know, we just unlocked a helicopter. Uh, and now we're flying around the very vast empty city now this thing is definitely a lot of fun to fly though it's a little tricky with the controls because you because you got the wasd as well as the three and four so sometimes uh 
you kind of get a little mixed up in the buttons, but other than that, this thing is extremely maneuverable. I wonder if I could maybe do a barrel roll. You know what? Let's try out the barrel roll here in a helicopter. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, okay, we're going upside down. What if I turn the thrusters off now? We're almost completing the roll. Turn them back on. Nailed it! Oh man, I can't believe we pulled that off! Alright, I've got a really awesome idea. We've got the tank created by Zen, and I am going to just line this up with some explosives. And we're gonna use that helicopter to try and take out this tank. Now, I think it might be rigged in our favor here a little bit, but you know what? I think that's the whole point. Alright, here we go. Ready for takeoff. Our enemy is literally right behind us, but that's okay. Uh, now, one thing is, this thing really just kind of, like, rises up into the air. Uh, it's... Okay, hold on. It's kind of difficult to fly because of that. If I want to kind of keep it steady at a certain height, um, it does get a little bit more confusing uh, because I might have to kind of manage pressing one on and off. But let's see here. Maybe I can just turn on these spud guns. Oh, it's a button! Well, that's gonna make it much- Okay, yeah, I think I, I need that follow cam. It's so important to have follow cam on something like this uh, just because of the fact that it is really hard to pilot. Now, let's just get a little bit lower here. Let's give ourselves some view. Okay, here we go. So now we're just gonna fly through this helicopter. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh-oh. Game didn't like that. We took the helicopter out, and we are flying away free. Oh man, that was so satisfying. Alright, so next up we're gonna be taking a look at a firehouse with trucks created by Professor Incognito and also Benny. Now these guys are some extremely talented builders. This is just, it looks like something so special and Professor Incognito is actually uploading uh, scrap mechanic content to YouTube so I'm going to be leaving a link to their channel down in the description below if you guys want to check them out yourselves you guys can see uh, some more insight probably into some of these absolutely amazing creations so make sure you go check them out uh, they are very talented builders all right now this is a fire hall you know we've got three fire trucks as well so it's like three different versions of fire trucks uh, and it's really cool because it seems like they are like really old school classic looking fire trucks you know they're not super modern or anything like that uh, and they just look absolutely fantastic and i'm pretty sure of course this entire build is vanilla as well now look at this i think we've got our first fire hose i guess we should probably go in through one of the front doors we'll do a tour of the building first and then we're going to check out each fire truck on the outside there so uh let's take a look here okay we're going to shut the doors behind us uh, and check this out. Look at this. We got a fire extinguisher. We've got a safety hatchet as well. A couple little ladders there. Look like some little six foot ladders, maybe. Uh, and then we got some various supplies here. Okay, what is this? Okay, I, I don't think that's fire hose. Uh, but let's see here. What does that switch do? Oh, whoa. Check that out. We've got a garage door right there. And okay, we're going to shut that. And I think this must be the other one. Nice, look at that. That's really satisfying too. If you take a look at these doors here, you can see there's a set of pistons on the bottom and a set of pistons on the top with some bearings probably that are just in between them. Yeah, and so as the pistons uh, extend and contract, you can see they extend out and it just pushes it in the open position. That's a really awesome and simple, very effective design for a garage door. Check this out. Look at this. We even have a dumpster. Oh my god, there's someone's leg in that dumpster. Alright, so let's just shut these back ones, because we also have a set of three doors at the front. Now, what's going on here? Okay, so there's two doors on that side, and then three on this side here. Now, where are the switches? Okay, here we go. Let's shut the main doors, and then we can open up the three front garage doors. Oh, look at that. What a nice view of these fire trucks. And this is something I love doing as well, using these like girder pieces along the like rooftops or the ceilings of giant warehouses. Uh, it just really makes it feel like there is a truss system up at the top there and it's like just more of like a physically accurate representation of a large building. Man, there's fire extinguishers 
all over the place. Now, I'm kind of surprised, though. I haven't seen any fire hoses down here. I don't think I've seen any anyway. We got lockers, and I'm going to assume these must be like helmets, maybe, or something like that on the top there. Now, we've got a switch right here. Ooh. Wow. Whoa. Oh, my. What the heck? That is... That is a stair system right there, let me tell you. Look at this. It's like art. That is just beautiful. We've got the spiral staircase system here that can uh, turn into maybe what's a ladder. It kind of looked like a ladder, didn't it? All right, so we're at the top now, and let's see what we got down this way. Oh, wow, look at this. This building is massive, by the way. Uh, okay, so we've got the fireman's pole. Look at this. Fireman's pole, very careful around there. We don't want to fall down that hole, so we're just going to... Save that for when there's an emergency. Uh, so we got workout systems here. Look at this. We've got a treadmill. Okay, whoa, come on now. This is... Is this like jogging speed? Oh yeah, look at that. We're getting our calories burnt today. Whew. All right, so we also have a bench press. Gotta have a bench press. And we also have a punching bag. Oh, look at that. Oh, even some free weights there. This is so cool. Just got the punching bag. This thing is dangerous. If someone was standing over there on that treadmill, oh my god, you better look out, because I'm training here too. All right, so aside from working out, what else do these firefighters like to do? Lounge, drink coffee, absolutely. Ooh, play a little bit of pool. This is such a cool little minimalistic design for a pool table. Looks really awesome. We got the pool cues there. Okay, that's a very tight space. We also have the lunch and break room. Check it out, we got our little kitchen. Ooh, we can open up the fridge. What's inside? Ooh, and the freezer opens. Oh my god, there is a human hand in the freezer. We're gonna pretend like we didn't see that. Man, the detail in this is so awesome. Look at this. What the heck? I don't even know exactly what that is, but this is cool. This is like a coffee maker, and then of course we've got the, uh, the water cooler as well. And oh, there's even Bruce up on the wall. These guys are avid fishermen as well. Uh, so then we also have uh, what seems to be an office, maybe. This is like a little bit of an office here where they can do some clerical work, you know, and... Oh! This is the alarm! Oh, that's cool! So this is where they be sleeping, so the alarm's going off. You know, you're up here, I call top bunk. Alright, so we wake up. Oh my god, the alarms are going. We gotta go. Look at that. Nice, quick path all the way to the pole. Slide down the pole. And now... We're in the main hall. Let's open up door number one. And we're gonna disconnect this. There we go. All right, we've got our first fire truck. Let's hop in. We're gone. That's a cute horn, by the way. And there we go. Oh, that is so cool. It even has, like, I'm guessing this is like a bell or something, you know? Because this is old school style fire truck vehicles. So let's see what the switch does. Okay, so it opens up the back there. So, I mean, okay, this is not specifically a fire truck. I guess this is more of, like, a like a critical response center uh, because this here is more of an ambulance, obviously. You can see we got a bed. Oh, there's even an IV drip and everything in there. Wow, that is so cool. All right, so that is the ambulance with that really cool bell. Oh, man, that looks so awesome. Okay, let's first of all, let's turn off the alarm in here. I think we get it. There's an emergency. So I was on my way up and I realized I did miss a little section here. We've got the showers. Oh yeah, check that out. We got ourselves a shower stall, bathrooms as well. And then of course a utility closet. Oh yeah, laundry room as well. Very important. Oh, look at that. We can even see the laundry happening. That is so cool. I love the little detail of that. Now there is kind of steamy smoke coming out of that. I don't know. I don't know what's causing that, but that looks really cool. And then, of course, we got all sorts of other firefighter equipment as well. Man, that's awesome. So let's make our way back down the spiral staircase here. We are going to take a look at these next two fire trucks here. Now, okay, this is way more of an actual fire engine and not so much an ambulance. So let's just drive this thing off. And I love the clearance. There's a lot of room underneath these trucks uh, so that you don't bottom out on anything. Now, this is awesome looking. Now, I think these are kind of like all modeled after the same version of truck with some variances. 
Uh, but the detail switches between them is so awesome. Now, here's a fire hose. Okay, I think that's technically two fire hoses, maybe. They're kind of cheap on the fire hoses at the fire hall here. Uh, but this looks absolutely awesome with the bell there as well. Such a classic truck design. And it's just super smooth to drive. And so we got the switch here. Now, what does that do? One. Oh, look at that. So one does control the ladder. Now, I wonder, can we climb it? Oh, yes, we can. That is awesome. So there's one more fire truck here, one more fire engine that we're going to be taking a look at. So that one seems to be like uh, the hose with the ladder and, I mean, an extra spare ladder on the side as well. This is our ambulance. Now, which kind of fire truck is this? Oh, is this... This is the water truck then, isn't it? So I'm guessing they would bring the water truck with the fire truck, so that way they would have the hose reel on one, extra water in another truck. Um, I'm, I'm guessing, anyway. Uh, that, that would make sense to me, anyway. Uh, so I guess, yeah, let's just see what this one's like as well. Like I said, I believe this is kind of all modeled after the same truck, so they're probably all going to handle the same. Uh, the differences here is the different uh, purposes that they would serve. Uh, so I would imagine, I guess, yeah, you would drive this truck up with that one there. That one's got the entire fire hose, so you could probably back it in, get it nice and close, and then attach the hose together with the water system, and now you are fighting fires. So again, this is an absolutely amazing build. All the details, so much fun to look through and check it all out. Uh, I'm going to remind you again to go check out the link down in the description for Professor Incognito's channel. Uh, be sure to check that out. And now we are looking at a Dreadnought mech created by Dusha Man. Now this thing looks absolutely awesome and it says here that it is from Warhammer 40k. Now, I am not a specific fan to that franchise, uh, but this thing looks absolutely awesome. Wow, the stance that it just took, the weaponry all around it as well. And I believe this is all vanilla, too. Now, the first thing I'm going to notice here is this is like a skull design, isn't it? That is so cool. I'm like 99% sure that is supposed to be a skull design. And it is pulled off so well. Now, I am extremely excited to figure out how to even get in this thing. Okay, so I've climbed up on top of the mech, and I can see that there is access to three different seats. And that is very interesting. Now, I think... Okay, they must all serve different purposes. Maybe they control the left and right side. Uh, why don't we just start with the center one here, and let's see what this is all about. Okay, so WASD is doing nothing, so let's just try with one. Okay, one is like a thruster that turns us left, and then two... Oh, two is the walking! Look at this. Now, it said in the description, I'm pretty sure, that there is no stabilizers at all. This is using an actual walking mechanism uh, that does not involve suspension glitches whatsoever, and you can see, look at this! That is so cool. Wow, okay, so now it makes sense why I might have these thrusters. So if I use three, oh yeah, there it is, look at that. We are turning to the right, oh my goodness. This is so cool, and then we can turn to the left. Now what does the first person look like? Oh my god, okay, the first person view is really narrow. You know, I, uh, but it does show you the buttons, so that way you can see if you're turning left or right very clearly. Uh, this thing is really stable as well, so we get a good view of where we are looking, too. So it's not so bad. Uh, now, let's see what 4 and 5 does. Okay, so 4 doesn't... Oh, 4 is turning the entire top part. It took me a moment to realize what was happening. Uh, but it's kind of turning the entire top torso like a turret, so you can actually point in different directions while you're walking. Uh, now, it would seem, though, that there are no weapons on this middle seat, and I think we were right in assuming that the left and right one controls its respective side here. So let's see what this one does. We got one. Whoa. Okay, so that's shooting probably... A, that was probably just shot a cannon there. Uh, but we can turn to the left using this seat as well, which is really interesting. And then back to the right as well. So wait, so can I just... I wonder if we could just walk in this seat. So this shoots spud guns. Okay, that's really awesome. 
and then we can turn as well and we can walk okay so yeah so you can do it oh wow this is really cool I, i'm pretty sure you can probably control this mech from pretty much any seat that you want so we can turn the spuds on and so if we wanted to we can just let someone else control the walking while we focus on like the left arm here uh, and shooting at all of our different targets now okay hold up here we are slowly going up a hill how's that gonna work i don't know wow this is so cool though look at that i can slowly turn the top of the mech to the right as well and shoot that way oh man this is amazing so if you're a fan of mechs in scrap mechanic or just mechs in general i really suggest you check this thing out on the steam workshop it is just so fascinating the walking mechanism is so unique and cool you just you gotta see it for yourself and next up, we've got some farming equipment here. This is a New Holland CR10.90 Combine Harvester created by Aquatro. Now this thing looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, and this is of course all vanilla as well. Uh, and I love farming equipment. I think I've made a few different types of farming equipment kind of things in Scrap Mechanic in the past. Uh, they are definitely loads of fun because they always tend to have lots of moving parts and they're very, very interactive. Uh, so let's take a look at the driver's seat here. Look at that. I love the little detailed ladder step system right there at the front. Uh, but we're going to hop into the seat here uh, and take a look at this. All right. So first things first, we got the rear wheel steering. Look at that. Really slick. Now, this thing is not super fast. It must be pretty heavy or something because you can see we're moving relatively slow. But one thing I noticed as well is look at how low to the ground this thing is. There is like no clearance down there whatsoever, so I think it's probably best that this thing be used on very, very flat land. Uh, so we got loads of switches though, so let's just see what they are all about. We can turn on some lights here. Uh, more lights. And ooh, what is this? Oh, okay, so this must be like a feeder or something like that. Now, I don't really know farming equipment very well, but I can imagine that maybe as you go around picking stuff up, uh, it comes to this back spot here, and it drops down into a uh, storage container of sorts. Ooh, oh yes, or... So that's really cool, so you can bring it all the way out, because I've seen this before as well. So as you're driving along, you can have a separate truck with a bin that is just driving along with you, receiving all of those crops. And then once the truck gets full, they swap the truck out with an empty one, and then they just keep on going uh, with the mechanism like this. Uh, and that's of course to save time and make it way more efficient to farm. So what else do we have though? We got five. Okay, so five is the thing that lowers down the uh, harvester right there. That's really cool. And then six. Ah, six is going to make it spin. That's so awesome. And then of course you would go through your crops and... Uh, you know, slowly drive through, collecting all of them, and then they would all kind of move towards the center, and then into the storage zone here. Now this is just such an awesome interactive build, and it would be really cool to be able to actually have stuff travel through pipes, uh, and then dispensed out the other end, even if it was just like a bit of a graphic or anything like that. That'd be really cool. Now I just want to see what happens when you only have one of these switches active here. So we can do three... Okay, so three just opens that up 90 degrees, like so. And then if we press four, let's just see here. It's going to go in, and then we can press four. Okay, see, and then nothing happens. So it requires both of these switches to extend fully. That's a really cool thing to add. And next up on the lift, we've got the Tink Truck No Mod created by Joe Tink. And this is a two-part build because there is also the Tink Trailer that goes along with this. And we already have it in the world, so let's spawn in the actual truck. There we go. And wow, okay, this thing is quite massive. This is a big truck. And then this is the trailer here that goes with it. I really like the look of uh, this holding mechanism right here. I'm kind of excited to connect the truck and the trailer. Now I'm going to assume that this is probably just going to lower it down. Yeah, okay, there we go. So we'll need that for when we have the truck in place. Ooh, look at this. That is so cool. That is such a nice little back. This is like a real truck, by the way. They have these lifts on the back, so you can actually move a pallet 
onto the lift and then just drop it right down to the ground. Uh, and that's really ideal if you're dealing with a, uh, a receiving system that doesn't have a bay. Uh, so I guess uh, this is just a switch that... Oh, wow. Okay, so that's the switch that just makes it so that you can have it open and stay up as well. So let's just see what happens if we close that like so. So if we open this up, just, okay, so nothing happens that way. Okay, that's really interesting. So that is a really, really well-designed trailer. And then on the back of the truck here, this is the mechanism that we're going to be probably using to latch on to the bottom of that trailer there. So I guess uh, let's hop inside here. Ooh, wow, look at that. Whoa, okay. This is a really nice-looking truck here. Loads of room inside. I, I, I was saying it was massive, and I guess... I wasn't wrong, the thing is absolutely massive. So let's line this up to the trailer. Now there are a ridiculous amount of uh, buttons and switches here, so we're gonna have to probably take a quick look at what's going on there. So let's just see here. Switch one is the door, two is the horn, three is the blinker. We got left blinker and also right blinker. We also have Okay, so that was a coincidence. Um, this is actually four ways, and then the right blinker. And then we also have our main headlights. And so this is the mechanism here, isn't it? So we're gonna be... Okay, I think that's open, and then that is closed. So I think I realized that this might not be flat enough where I am, and that might be causing the issue uh, with getting this thing to go into its appropriate spot here. So let's try it this way. We're just gonna take it up off the ground a little bit here. And I feel like it should just go through that piston. Yeah, it's pretty much going through it. Now, what if I drop it? Okay, there we go. So it, that's what I figured had to happen is it had to go through that piston there. And it seems like it has. So now we can lock it in place. So now we've got the trailer loaded up. All right, so let's get out of here. What we're gonna do is remove the lift and then we're going to take the trailer off, just like so, off the ground. And I think we should be ready to haul this bad boy. Uh, so let's just see what happens here. Oh yeah, gaining some speed. Okay, there we go. We are now cruising with this thing. Let's get up onto the road here. Oh wow. Come on, stay upright trailer, I believe in you. And there we go, we made it. All right, look at this. I love driving big trucks with trailers and scrap mechanic. It's like one of the most satisfying things ever. Especially when you can like really just have them loose like that and not even connected. Uh, so let's just see what it's like to maybe uh, pretend like we're gonna back this thing up into a, uh, a receiving bay here. Let's pretend like in between those two pine trees right there, we gotta back this thing in and we gotta ship some cargo. All right, so we're gonna go this way. Nice and easy. Oh yeah, this is this is like peak trailer driving scrap mechanic right here. It's so much fun. Okay, hold on. I think we're actually bottoming out over there. Uh, but we should be good. There we go. Keep it going. But yeah, this is a really awesome truck build. It looks absolutely amazing. Um, and I just, I absolutely love this trailer hitch design here. The way it locks in. We've got the wheels and everything super collisionless and it should be as easy as just disconnecting it like so uh, and then just driving away from it okay I guess I probably should have put the legs down uh, but you get the idea all right so for the last creation that we're gonna be taking a look at it is the helicarrier version 2 1 to 4 scale created by mr. cat pixel now I've created a helicarrier in the past it was absolutely massive um, so uh, huge props to taking on a build like this uh, and this thing just looks absolutely amazing now it's huge by the way this thing is massive and it just looks so well made the shaping all of the detail work that must have went into this wow this is really impressive. Now, it's so large, I don't even know how I am supposed to get in this thing. All right, this is looking promising. We're at the back of the ship here. We are now on a part of it. Now, I think this is one of the bays here. So underneath it, you would have like vehicles stationed. And I think we should be able to press this here. Okay, there we go. 
And I think this would move it up to the runway. Oh, that is so cool. So you'd have your vehicle stored down below and then it's brought up on the elevator and you point it in the right direction, hopefully, and you are just ready to launch off of the helicarrier. Uh, this is really awesome. Now, the bridge is all the way up here and I think, okay, there is a driver's seat. Uh, so why don't we just hop directly into the driver's seat? There we go. We're gonna pretend like we are the carrier. Now, I didn't read the controls, so I'm just gonna start guessing here, but let's just see. One, ooh, look at that. One is going to lift us up into the air. Wow, that is just a smooth ride. And then two is gonna bring us down. Okay, yeah, absolutely, we got that. And then, oh yeah, W-A-S-N-D does work. Wow, this thing is so cool. This thing is massive. All right, so let's just turn it in towards the world here. I don't feel like driving it all the way off into the wall. Okay, so it's going nice and slow. So what do we got? We got more here. I hope none of them are self-destruct. So we've got three, which is controlling the lift in the center there. Okay. So four is controlling some lights. And I think, yeah, so four and five are the lights there. And let's see, what does a six do? Oh. What? It says camera on. Wow, no way. That is cool. Okay, so I think we're looking behind us. That is so crazy. There's like a camera of some sorts mounted to the back of it. That is so cool. Now, you can see this thing is ridiculously stable. I mean, look at this. I'm just standing on it right now, and I can not feel the slightest movement, which in my mind means this could be a very very useful and practical design for like an airborne carrier that you can actually land and fly on because a lot of the time something's always rising or lowering uh, and if you would ever see it before you know you'd be like bouncing around on the creation which is you know never a good time uh, but this is probably like the most stable platform I have ever stood on in this game. So that is going to be the video for today, guys. I sure hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it or if you enjoyed these builds, let me know by hitting that like button. And if you want to tune in for some more endless scrap mechanic, then be sure to subscribe to the channel, maybe even turn on some notifications so you can get the latest and the craziest coming from me in scrap mechanics. So thank you so much for tuning in and I will be seeing you in the next one. So bye for now.